Hello and welcome back to my scrap room. My name is Jennifer Perry and today we're going to be working on this is the second installment of a work in progress for the Josephine Wall Mask of Love. So we've done a kitting up and we've done a whip one. So this is going to be a whip two. I have moved the camera down really close to the canvas so that this time you can see the symbols. And the only editing I have done is just to get my head out of frame or if there are long pauses, like if I had to stop and check a phone, move a cat, type, get my head out of the way, that type of thing. I wanted this to be, there's no editing, it's not been sped up, I wanted this to be more real time so that you guys can see about how long it takes to do a small section. Now, I started this little bit of a section and then I stopped and I went, oh, I want to film. So that's where this one is going to work out to be really um, short and compact. But there's some information that I want to put in and share. So the reason that I am showing the grid is because I have had a few new comments, not on the channel, but by other people that are interested that I have been talking to. And the way that I've been explaining diamond painting is it's a cross between cross stitch and paint by numbers but on a sticky canvas so I wanted to show it up close and personal this time I also had a few questions about diamond painting and medical issues with hands and yes I think that if you do have a medical issue with a hand or something of that nature you can still diamond paint my suggestion would be getting a bigger pen if you notice my pen is a big fat white pen it is chunky and it's bigger than the stock pin that comes with the kit. I want to say the stock pin that comes with the kit to me reminds me of just a big pin that we used to all use in high school. It's very small, very um, uncomfortable in my opinion. So when I found the thicker pins, I was all over that. Now my pin I had custom made, but since I've had my pin made, Diamond Art Club also started carrying pins of the same caliber so you can actually get your kit and your pen right at diamond art club so i think the thicker pen chunkier pen if you have hand issues would be easier i've also been asked sorry i keep swallowing i also keep, uh, was asked whether or not this drives me crazy because it's just taking one small drill and putting it on a sticky canvas and no this does not drive me crazy when I very first saw diamond painting, I thought the person working on that canvas was absolutely nuts. Why in the world, and you've heard me talk about this before, why in the world would you, why would you do that? How do you have the patience to do that? And I'll tell you again, I've said in the past, you would think that it would drive you nuts. You would think it would be very, very tedious, but this is one of those crafts that is just very relaxing. The canvas tells you what to do. It's just find a symbol, plunk it down. It's very relaxing. And for me, I don't have anxiety issues. I don't have anything like that that other people get relief with diamond painting with. But for me, it gives me a break when my brain is having a creative block. And I can feel like I can still be creative and my, my brain can still rest. So for me, that's, that's the niche that diamond painting works for in my brain because I'm also a scrapbooker that's fairly creative, but sometimes your brain just doesn't want to create. And that's where, at the end of the day for me, because we're all busy moms, we all live very, very busy lives, and there's a few dads in here, sorry. I keep forgetting about that. I, both of my hobbies are so female-driven that I forget that there's guys that like to scrapbook and there's guys that like to diamond paint. So if you're one of those guys and you're watching, keep it up, I'm sorry, I don't mean to exclude you, but it's very lady-driven. But for me, sorry, I had a hiccup there. I always have to hiccup when I'm, when I'm doing a voice surfer. For me, it is, you know, at the end of the day, your brain is tired. We have done the mommy thing. We've, we've done the wife thing. It, our day is done for the day. And I can just come into my room, turn my lights on, and play and not have to think about anything. I can turn on a book that I've listened to 100,000 times, I can turn on a show that I've watched a hundred thousand times and I can just play. So that's what I like about diamond, uh, diamond painting. And like I've said in the past, I am now 
leaning 100% towards Diamond Art Club for various reasons. The main reason for me is, well, there's two main reasons. A, they, they are the best kit that I've ever come across. But two, they pay their artists. And that is, as an artist mom, I have to put my money where my mouth is. So you do you. You buy your kits where you would like to buy your kits. Just know that if you're going to be on this channel, you're going to watch me. It's going to be probably always a Diamond Art Club because I believe in what they're doing. So, okay. So the other thing I was talking about was I was telling this, this friend of mine that the the canvas, the drills are super sparkly and that's what that's part of what makes it fun. But you will also notice there's what's called AB drills and from, for the ones on this canvas, you can see them sprinkled in a little bit on the section that I'm working on, but most of them are off towards the right. They're, they're super sparkly white canvas, white canvas, oh dear God. White sparkly drills, those are ABs. ABs are ones that have an extra coating on them that just make them extra special. They extra shine. And we go stupid over AB drills around here. So this particular canvas has three AB drills. Right now I've only been able to play with one and two. I haven't really played with number three yet. But hopefully, well, of course this canvas is going to get to it. It's, it's included with the canvas. So anyway. Um... I am having a problem with, and I thought this was going to be an issue when I first started this canvas, and that's the cats want to sit on this one. I don't know if it's because it's so big that it's taking up more of the space of the desks that I share with them, but they are definitely, and if you look really, really close in the white spaces, you can see a tiny bit of cat hair to where I keep having to scooch them off the canvas, and I was afraid of that. I was afraid if I took the clear plastic off this particular kit that I would have a problem with cat hair and I am it hasn't made it over to the sticky section yet if it does I'm gonna have a conniption fit because I want this canvas to stay pristine but the boys have other ideas they have been walking across it they've been laying on it they you know and now I've got Peter with me right now and in a couple of weeks, I will have Peter, Shoney, Biscuits, and Dumplings. So I'll have all four of them. And that's, that's going to be chaos. Just I may have to just come in here and shut the door. In fact, probably what I need to do is just leave my office door shut for the interim while I'm working on this canvas. But I'm so used to leaving it open. I'm so used to them having free range of where they want to go. And 99% of the time they respect my my space and my canvas and they don't get into mischief but I looked over last night I was sitting here with my husband and I was just goofing off watching YouTube videos and I looked over and both of my boys Dumpling and Peter I'm sorry Dumpling and Biscuit um, were laying on either side of the canvas they weren't on the canvas but each of them had a foot reached out touching the canvas Peter has not figured out that he can come in here and join us yet, so when he does, we'll have to find a spot for him to go, but he hasn't quite figured out that he can come in here and spend time with the family. So it was just my boys, and they both knew they weren't supposed to be on the canvas, but Mike and I looked over and they both had one foot touching the canvas like a toddler, just like a toddler that you say, don't do that. They both did it. So anyway, it was, it was funny. I laughed despite myself, and, and I really didn't mean to, but... Just like kids, they were like, oh, it made her laugh. Okay, we'll do it again. So, anyway, this is a shorter whipping chat. I wanted to keep it short and sweet. Just something to pop in, show you the short, not the short. My God, where is my brain today? Show you the grid and how it actually looks when you're nose to grid. If you notice here, I'm pretty close. I've got my face pretty close to the canvas. And it's because in this particular frame, I'm having to reach over into the center of the canvas. I'm in one of the awkward spaces. So I'm having to work over and reach over a little bit farther in. I do have a pool noodle on both edges of my desk. So as I'm leaning over the canvas, I'm not creasing the canvas. It's draped over the pool noodle on both sides at the top and the bottom. So I'm not worried about creasing the canvas, but I am having to reach over. And I have 
one more, I'm looking at the camera, so I have one more row on the left side, which is where I'm working right here. And then probably one more row towards the bottom. And then I can start flipping the canvas and rotating and doing the edges. But I'm still concentrating on the parts that are hard to reach. This is a very large canvas. It is 70 centimeters wide by 93 centimeters long. So instead of doing my normal start at the top left and work my way down and do all the edges and then do the center in the middle because you can reach it no matter what you're doing. For this one, I decided to start in the middle, get the entire middle section finished, and then do my edges. And by doing the edges, that means you have to turn the canvas right side up, side to side, and upside down. And by the time I get done with the center section, I will know the symbols enough that when I'm working upside down, I will still know what the proper orientation and color of that symbol is. And normally, I work upside down to start off with, and then when I flip it back over front ways and right side up, I have a little bit of a brain issue figuring out which one is which. So if you are looking at the picture, and I will plop one in, hold on one second. So if you're looking at the picture, and I've just stuck it up on the right hand corner for you really quickly. I have, I have finished the rows and I'm working up the back of Christine's shoulder and I'm working on the side of her face and up into her hair. So you can kind of see at the moment I'm kind of working in her hair and over around the pearls that are in her hair at the moment. This, if you're wondering what Mask of Love is, it is a version of Phantom of the Opera. So I'm kind of working on Christine at the moment. I'm up in her hair and I have worked on part of her face already. So that's where we are in the actual picture of this canvas. So you can see where I'm kind of still working in the middle kind of working on that that really difficult space right there and it would be kind of hard to reach because if you notice I started in the rows is where I started this particular canvas and I'm just working my way up. So that's about where we are at the moment. And these, you know, if you've ever worked with the Diamond Art Club, these drills are phenomenal they are I'm having very little trash in fact my trash bucket is super tiny I took a I finally found a yogurt jar that is actually glass and it fits really nicely into my drill tray and I've had like three trash drills so far I've had of actual trash drills I've had more um, drills that don't belong or or other plastic trash you know like where the edges of the drill or something have have come off and they're still in there that kind of trash but as far as the drills having holes in them or being too small or or concave or anything like that, anything like that i haven't had any issue at all so the drills are absolutely pristine as far as i'm concerned that's another reason why I love working with Diamond Art Club. They are still having a bit of a problem on 310s, and it's got to be that color. I don't know why, but 310s are still everybody's dreaded color. And there's not a lot of that in this canvas. Thank goodness. 310 is probably the, the, the lightest color, or the, um, not light, it is the least amount of color. That's the word that I'm looking for in this canvas. I'm also starting to get into a little bit of confetti and the way that I'm handling the confetti is I just if it's one or two I just stick my finger in the jar and pick out one or two drills or I try to dump out as few drills as possible do the confetti and then you know move on to the next one but I've been looking at each section that I open up and I try to find the confetti first get the confetti done and then I work on to the more color blocked sections or the ones with more symbols in each little section that I'm working, each little square that I'm working. So I'm trying to get the confetti done first. In this particular one, 
it was kind of hit or miss. There was there was like one or two that were close together and then you have a color block section and then one or two that are close together and a color block section. So there, on this particular one, there wasn't a lot of confetti until you get up towards the top of the square and that didn't take long at all to do. But I can see where people will use multiple boats or a, what is that? It's a stadium type tray, drill tray type thing. But I'm still able to work quite well with my one tray, my one pen, and a single placer. It might take me a little bit longer, but that's part of the enjoyment. This is relaxation for me. It's not how fast can I finish this canvas. It's This is just my way of unwinding. It's not a race as far as I'm concerned. So I, I want to totally enjoy my process. So as you can see, that's the other reason why I love large canvases. They might be more expensive to purchase up front, but I also get a much longer playtime out of this canvas. I'm not racing through it and then, oops, I'm out of work and I need to go buy another canvas. This is going to take me longer than May to finish. I know that the there are some YouTubers out there that are working with hashtag going J wall and they're all working on Josephine wall projects and they're trying to get them done in the month of May. There's no way I'm going to be finished with this in the month of May. It may take me two or three months to finish this canvas. But if I'm ordering one or two large canvases and they're taking me three and four months to do that money averages out to possibly being cheaper than buying five or six smaller canvases that take me a week, two weeks, or three weeks to do. So for me, I like buying the larger canvases. I don't mind that they are more expensive because it also takes me longer to do them. With Erase, I think it took me two and a half months to do Erase, and that was a smaller canvas. This one is much larger than Erase, so I'm going to get many, many days of enjoyment out of this. And it's it's a subject that I love and I've wanted to do with Josephine wall painting. So this kills two birds at one stone. I love Phantom of the Opera and you just cannot beat the beauty in this kit. So I'm going to totally enjoy it no matter what I do. So we're reaching towards the end of our little square here. I wanted to keep this whip and chat short, sweet, to the point. And I'll show you that it does not take long. You don't have to have long, huge sections to get finished with what you're working on. You can take 20, 30 minute little breaks and work on a small little square and enjoy just a little, you know, I used to call them Kit Kat breaks when you just disappear from life for a few minutes and enjoy some quiet. So you can break these down into smaller little chunks and just do, you know, 30 minute sections, 20 minute sections and get some brain break in your day. You do not have to have just marathon diamond painting sections. Sections or sessions. Let's go with sessions. That sounds like a good word. You do not have to have marathon diamond painting sessions. You can break it into smaller bite-sized sessions. And that way you're getting some enjoyment throughout your day. Sometimes I can have marathons. My favorite day to have a marathon is laundry day because the washing machine and the dryer forces me to get up and have wiggle breaks. But there are a few times that I have been able to sit down and just diamond paint all day and all night. Honestly though, those, you know, as much as it's fun to sit there and do that, if I don't stop and wiggle, I'm going to start and hurt um, from just lack of wiggling. So I prefer to keep it um, short and sweet. We have finished our little section here. I'm going to pan out and show you my drill tray really quickly in just a moment. And you'll be able to see that. Again, thank you so much for joining me. I know you have many, many channels that you could be watching, and I just thoroughly appreciate that you spend a moment of your time with me. Until next time, thank you so much. Bye.